Hi friends, it's me, Oliver Superbeardy, your gut health detective with the fluffiest paws and biggest heart. <sighs> Today, I need help solving a puzzling case. Oh, <sighs> well, uh, it's not about me this time. It it's about one of my best buddies, Sam. <gasps> He's been acting kind of strange at mealtimes. He, he, he takes forever to eat, drinks a lot of water with every bite, and told me he doesn't like hamburgers anymore. Oh, that's not like Sam. He loved burgers. So I did what any good friend and super sleuth would do. I made a list of clues and... <clears throat> I called in an expert. Oliver, did you break into my email again? <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Well, anyway, you did the right thing, Oliver. And uh, to help us crack the case, we're joined by a true expert, Dr. Sophia Patel, a pediatric gastroenterologist at the Cleveland Clinic, and she helps kids just like Sam every day. But wait a minute, Oliver. Are you, are you on a farm? I hear chickens. I am just on the other side of this wall. Are chickens. And I have to round them up, so I gotta hurry up. Okay, Oliver. Thank you. I'm glad you 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 have your job as a herder. I but do. today we're gonna focus. We have I'm Dr. Patel here. We have Dr. Patel, and we're so happy to have oh, her yeah. here. Hi, hi, Jacqueline. Hi, hi Oliver. Hi. <laughs> hi. It's nice to meet you. Hey, chicken. Do you need a gastroenterologist? <laughs> <laughs> I think some of those chickens do. Thanks for having me. I'm so glad you reached out. What you're talking about with Sam is something that we want to pay attention to. Okay, Dr. Patel, here's what I've noticed about Sam. You tell me what you think. Clue number one. <clears throat> Sam eats so slowly. His spaghetti gets cold before he finishes a meal. Oh, taking a long time to eat can mean swallowing is uncomfortable or even painful. Yeah. But when, but clue number two. Um, he takes a drink after every single bite. Is that normal? Not usually, Oliver. Some kids do that to help food get pushed down if it feels like it gets stuck in their throat. Oh, oh. well, clue number three. Sam avoids chewy foods now. No more pizza, sandwiches, or meat. He used to love them. Oh, no. I Definitely avoiding certain textures is a common sign that eating doesn't feel good anymore. Oh, and clue number four, Sam told me he sometimes gags or even throws up during meals. That sounds scary. It can be really upsetting for kids and parents. Gagging and vomiting might happen when the esophagus is irritated or inflamed. Ooh, well, and one more thing. Sam's kind of small for his age. He, he never seems to grow up much or gain any weight. Is that connected? Yeah, that can be definitely connected. If eating's uncomfortable, Sam might not eat enough, and that can lead to poor growth or trouble gaining weight. And that's one of the big clues that we look for. Oh, I just want Sam to feel good and grow big and strong like the rest of us. Yeah, and he will, Oliver. With the right diagnosis and care plan, we can help him feel better and grow healthy and strong. <sighs> okay, okay, time. Time for the big reveal. Are you ready, chicken? <clears throat> What is EOE? So, EOE stands for eosinophilic esophagitis. That's a big name, but it means that certain white blood cells called eosinophils are causing inflammation in the esophagus. That inflammation makes it really hard or painful to swallow. That's a big word. So, it's like Sam's food slide is getting sticky and swollen? Yes, I love that you called it a food slide. And the food doesn't slide down easily in kids who have EOE. And that's why Sam might feel like things are getting stuck. Oh, wait. Oh, could Sam be allergic to something he's eating? And that's a great question, Oliver. Some kids with EOE have food allergies or sensitivities that might play a role in their symptoms. And that's part of the reason why we sometimes will do allergy testing as part of the EOE care plan to figure out what might be causing the inflammation. Oh, wow. So this isn't about being a picky eater or acting out, it's something real happening inside. Yes, it's a real thing. EOE is not caused by bad behavior or picky eating. It's a real medical condition and kids deserve compassion and help. 
If other kids or parents notice clues like Sam's, what should they do? That's a great question, Oliver. Parents and caregivers, the first step is to talk to your pediatrician. Be specific about what you're seeing at their meals. If they suspect EOE, they'll refer you to a pediatric gastroenterologist like me. And for kids listening, if eating hurts or feels weird, tell a parent, a teacher, or another grown-up that you trust. They can help you get the care that you need. And you don't have to figure this out alone. Well, how is EOE diagnosed? Well, EOE is diagnosed with a procedure called an endoscopy. The child is asleep while we look inside the esophagus with a small camera and we take tiny samples to check for those eosinophils or the allergy cells. What about treatment? Treatment can include a lot of different things, but mostly medicine, diet changes, or both. Every kid is different, so we work closely with families to figure out what works best for them, just like we'll do for Sam. And it's also important to know that EOE is a chronic disease, which means that it doesn't go away completely. But with the right care, we can manage it well and help kids feel great. Oh, Dr. Patel, can you share your superhero checklist for parents who might not have a Sam at home? Of course. Here's what I recommend. Number one, notice how your child eats. Do they eat slowly? Do they take a long time? Not just what they eat. Number two, keep a food diary and note any gagging, food refusal, or complaints. Number three, don't be afraid to ask questions or bring up concerns with your pediatrician. And number four, if needed, ask for a referral to a GI specialist like me. And remember, kids don't always say, my throat hurts. Sometimes behavior is a body's way of asking for help. That's right, Oliver. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Patel. And thank you, parents, caregivers, and kids of all ages for tuning in. We cracked the case of the slippery swallow, and Sam's on the way to feeling better. Oh, stay curious, stay kind, and never ignore a sticky clue. Oliver, I'm so glad we cracked that case together like an egg. <laughs> nice pun. <laughs> I'm going to tell the chicken. Come here, chicken. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Gastro Girl Podcast. As always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel and on our Apple and Spotify as well. Thank you for listening to the Gastro Girl Podcast. For more information and resources, please visit gastrogirl.com. Do you have a question for Gastro Girl? Please email podcast at gastrogirl.com. The information, opinions, and recommendations presented in the Gastro Girl podcast are not a substitute for medical advice from your healthcare professional. Please consult a licensed clinician in your state regarding all matters related to your health.